Hey everybody, welcome to the Engadget Podcast for the week of August 12th. Uh, my name is Brian Heater. Uh, Peter's back. Hey Peter. Yes, I'm done traveling. Yeah? Did you go anywhere exciting? Uh, not that exciting. No. I did go, um, the one thing I did, which okay. I, there, <laughs> okay, okay. I will say that this my vaca- I actually went on a vacation last week. Oh. Um, the rest of the time I was traveling, but no. uh, and I went. Um, I got to go to uh, Howe Caverns. Have you heard of this? It's like in the middle of New yeah. York State. Yeah. And they have an animatronic oh robot God. of the guy who discovered Howe Caverns, <laughs> like the, like something Howe. He's like a farmer in the 1840s. Farmer and Howe. So, yeah, Farmer Howe. So yeah. they have an animatronic version of him, which tells you about his discovery of the cave. And then inside the cave itself, there's actually like an underground river that you can like get in a boat and sail down the, the he's, river. He's not in the cave. He's not in the cave. He's right at the top of the cave. He before doesn't you go. pilot the boat down the underground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not like the <laughs> river <laughs> sticks. You have yeah. to confess all of your sins. So uh, animatronic. I, yeah. I like to have animatronics on every trip, every vacation. I so. think animatronics are great, but I do think that it's a sad state of affairs that just a, a cave with an underground river that you can go on is not a draw. Yeah, no, I know. They were like, yeah. how can we punch up this yeah, amazing exactly. cavern with an underground river? So uh, what what was the most exciting thing you did last week, Terrence? Oh, sleep and drink. <laughs> That's usually the most exciting part of my week. This show got really sad really fast. <laughs> um, oh, I, you, I, you got I, a I was, wedding that you're planning for? Yeah, I mean, I suppose that was kind of exciting. Thank yeah. you. Uh, wandering around, finally actually getting that put together yeah. six weeks ahead of time. How much like that we're going to see at the wedding is going to be 3D printed? Um, hopefully all of it. I'm going to actually... <laughs> I was thinking you that... You guys start printing now. Yeah, I, 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 I was, was thinking I might trade in my that. current fiancé and just 3D print a new mm. one. You know. She doesn't... I, I mean, I'm, I think it's pretty safe bet she's not watching the podcast. Yeah. 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 Which Good. is a shame. Yeah. Because she's the worst. <laughs> she is. All right. <laughs> uh, it is... I mean, great week for great week for you to return, Peter, because we're kind of in the dregs of summer mm, right yeah. now. Not, not a lot has happened. Um... I, I'm, this, I'm, this actually would be a great time to bury news if you have bad news. I guess like Blackberry, right? <laughs> well, that would, it would have been the worst time to bury news, right? Because it, just, it would have been the only the thing that would have Well, no, because everyone's on vacation. So this yeah. is supposedly like um, yeah. when everyone tries to like release their bad news, right? I, I see. For me, I would wait for Apple Week. And yeah. <laughs> Literally so at do, the same well, exact that. moment yeah. that the iPhone 5S yeah. comes out on stage, that's when you say, oh, by the way, uh, sure. we're closing up shop and never making a, a black pass, pass, Go to the event, sit uh, in the back row, <laughs> wait till Tim Cook gets on stage. And, and then, then hit send. send on the PR release <laughs> about how you're folding up. I feel like somebody has help. done that. I feel like oh, somebody. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, so <laughs> we just missed it. So. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We were, we were too busy drooling over the phone. Uh, so, I mean, as far as actual big news is concerned, I, I think the biggest news of the week is that Windows 8.1 got a launch date. Right? Man, that's a l- I know. And, and this we, is a we very knew, sad <laughs> week. We, we, we knew it was October. Yep. And now um, we know specifically it's seen, the 17th. We've gotten a pretty extensive hands-on. We know what it looks like. Yep. But uh, I don't know. To rehash what Dana said in her hands-on, it's, you know, it's absolutely worth the upgrade. Sure. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's a good show, everybody. Yeah, but but I, I I do think that the the, the good thing is that it's shown that Microsoft is um yeah you know moving into a new kind of uh, development for Windows. Which do we is, know for a fact that this is what it's going to be like from now on? I think I don't know if they've confirmed that, but I, yeah. I think there's no reason for us not to think that they're going to have um at least some sort of yearly upgrade, if not like a. I think the question is like how frequently, you know, when we see like Windows 9, is that something that, yeah. is it every other year they do a big update like that? And I mean, if they're really going the direction of Apple, then it's going to be probably about 15 years until we see Windows 9. <laughs> um, um, possibly. But, um, you know, it, it's, um, there has not been any speculation about a Windows 8.2, so, or Windows 9, I guess. But, um, you know, the fact that they are at least like thinking about it in this way and they're offering updates yeah. on, on a, a, you know, real regular basis. And it's a free update. Yeah, that's great. I mean, it's. It, it, I think it's a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, you know, the 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 model that Apple's been doing for the past what 12, 12 years or so. Yeah, it's been twelve years. Yeah. Um, it's a mixed bag. I mean, it's great. It's great to ha- start with a good product, which you know, Windows eight is by by most accounts, and just to fix all those problems pretty quickly. Um, but then you know, it's just it's not as it's not as exciting to not have a big new operating system to look at every few years. Yeah. Although Microsoft has, I think, learned its lesson in in that when you're dealing with an operating system that's you know on 
what like 80 some odd percent of computers out there that you can't just go and make a huge change every couple of years because most people don't even know what operating system they're running well and most people haven't even upgraded to eight yet yeah um but the question for me is really going to be when are they going to finally figure out rt because i know that rt gets an 8.1 update but it doesn't doesn't seem to be anything really interesting. By figure out, you mean stop making it? Yeah, or stop I mean, it or, <laughs> or decide that they're gonna yeah. how they're gonna make it good or or not do it at all. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 you know, the manufacturers. Asus came out and said something. I mean, the manufacturers are already making a pretty big point that it just wasn't. It was, it was an experiment. It wasn't a successful experiment. Nope. Um, not that it's a terrible operating system. It's just that there's no reason for it to exist yeah, when it, it comes right down to it. It seems like a thing that they did because. They figured ARM was the way everybody was going. Yeah. That's yeah. how you're going to get the most power savings, and they couldn't recreate the full Windows experience, and they made this thing that nobody really seems to have much vested interest in outside of Microsoft. It seems crazy to me that they couldn't have come out with a fuller version of Windows. For I, I, I mean, and certainly the technology is probably there now. Well, right? I mean, the, the the problem is that, and we're this is how dead it is that we're going back to the technical <laughs> details of windows eight. Sure. On the podcast. No, I'm, I'm fascinated. Go um, on Terrence. You know, it's, it's a CPU architecture thing. Yeah. At this point, you'd have to run legacy applications through an emulation layer, which on an arm, it's not being, sure. they, wouldn't be, they wouldn't be powerful enough. Yeah. It wouldn't be able to run it at anywhere near an acceptable level. I mean, even the apps that are coded specifically for RT and for arm, that are built into Windows 8 are relatively slow and unresponsive at a lot of times. I mean, I had the Surface in my possession for a couple of months, and even things like Evernote were yeah. just miserable to use. You would launch it and walk away yeah. and go do something else. But I think I, I think the um, the real problem for Microsoft is that you know they they touted RT as sort of their response to the iPad, right? Their response yeah. to, to their answer to, um, you know, to the tablet market to i to iOS, but they already um, had that operating system on smartphones. Well, yeah, yeah. and I, I I've made the argument that they, maybe they should have tried to build up Windows Phone rather than yeah. scale down uh, Windows, but and created like a basically a third operating system. Yeah, but the thing is now what they've done is they've sufficiently scared all of their OEM partners that um, like I, I think the OEM partners no longer have faith that Microsoft is going to give them an option. Yeah, which is why you're seeing. You know, HP and Acer, uh, a lot of these other guys starting to to really um, look at Chrome OS and um, Android as as alternatives. I mean, was it Acer that said that they're going to start really investing into Android and, and Chrome? Yeah, uh, and I think that's yeah. a, that's a terrible thing for Microsoft that that you know they don't have that their their biggest partners don't have enough faith that they can get the mobile part of the market right. I yeah I I. I, I... You know, I I thought the the idea of hybrids was 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 appealing to a lot of people, but yeah. they've also kind of shot themselves in the foot on that front just by you know by putting RT front and center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's move on. Right. <laughs> oh, uh, I, I do. You know, I, I asked you, Terrence, what other news had come through, and you forgot to remind me of the fact that uh, we we actually just announced uh, like a slew of new people for expand um, i'm right you're right i'm sorry i forgot to remind you of that it's you clearly forgot all to remind my... me of that thing that i helped to make happen yeah um no <laughs> of that is... post that you probably wrote yourself right? i didn't actually write. Oh, this okay. is all this is all this was all barb it's got that that dibwad touch wow. that you just can't you can't emulate you can't run an emulator for that you just don't have the <laughs> cpu power uh this is <sighs> like of every i'm gonna say of any expand announcement that we've done um san francisco or new york i think this is the far and away the the the, the strongest lineup of guests um big at the top levar burton pretty yeah. cool uh jordy and you know and doing some really cool stuff on the education front with uh, the reading rainbow app. i only know him from reading rainbow so <laughs> <laughs> he was on he was in star wars come on yeah <laughs> You know, you saw Roots. Yeah. You know Kunta Kinte. <laughs> yeah, I know from Roots. From Rio, Rio. <laughs> yeah. what, Whatever what he did in between, been? I don't know. Yeah. What is it? What if? So, what have you been up to, Levar? <laughs> Everybody from, here wants to know. From 1981 yeah. to. Uh, <laughs> I've heard. Oh man, my my least favorite my least favorite question I've ever heard an entertainment reporter ask is. Um, to interviewing somebody from a, a you know very iconic movie and saying so. At the end of the movie, what do you think happened to that character? 
can you can you write some fanfic for me right now? Oh my. Um, so we'll find. Uh, my point is, is that we're gonna find out what Jordy's been up to. Yeah. <laughs> his, maybe his him, eyes got fixed. Write some live fanfic about him and Picard oh, riding God. off into the sunset together. You're, re- you're describing my fantasy right I know. now. Uh, <laughs> Why couldn't they just give him fake eyes? And <laughs> don't they in the later movies? Don't they? In- I mean, yeah, why was he, he walking? Seen, yeah. But why was he walking around with that hairband for so long? Is my point. I mean, the t- they didn't know. have the technology in I, the 1990s. <laughs> yeah, they couldn't. Yeah. The 1990s or the 23rd century. I mean, was, we're talking about a period of like maybe 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> so this is several hundred years in the future, and then 10 years they. You know. Anyway, so, I'm sorry. Yeah, several hundred years is not a lot for uh, a lot of time for microelectronics to advance like that. I agree with you, but it's really that last 10 years, I think, that really pushes it over that. Point being, LeVar Burton is going to be at Expand on the, the, the 9th and 10th of November. Um, He's Chris- going to be headlining both days? Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> just, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. You know what? We're done. <laughs> We're going to have Kuta Kinte panel. We're going to have Jordi LaForge panel. Expand is getting better by the moment. <laughs> is he going to read books to us? Like, come oh, on. God. Did I... I had a, we had LeVar Burton on, wait, don't give me that look, Ross. We had LeVar Burton on the Engadget show, and I had a, I had a, the most emotional moment I've ever had on camera before. Do you remember oh, that? Very vaguely. That was quite a while ago. I, I interviewed him, and I turned to him, and I said, you know, you taught me how to read. <laughs> and my voice cracked a little bit wow. when I said that. All right. So I Chris, forget you're a lot younger than me. <laughs> well, you forget that I've only learned to read in the past 10 years <laughs> yeah. or so. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Lewicki from Planetary Resources, they're drilling asteroids, which is awesome. So that's going to be really cool. Uh, Becky Stern, uh, she's also been on the Ad- Gadget Show. Uh, that was in um, context of her working at Make. She's actually at uh, Adafruit, Adafruit, Adafruit right now. Yeah. So she's going to be talking about wearables. She makes really cool stuff with zippers. Yes. It's going to be a lot of fun. And then Ben Heck, huge get. We love yeah, Ben Heck. Super excited. Also in Gadget Show. Yeah. Yep. So really, really, this is just a live. Show live. Yeah. If you miss the live and gadget show, it's coming back November 9th and tenth. It's gonna be like the greatest hits. Yeah, exactly. we're actually just gonna make them enact, reenact all yeah. of their segments from the show. All of these names are actually just video that we're gonna be playing <laughs> in the event. So prepare to be really disappointed on that front. Um, also, I, I guess really big news that happened this week: Hyperloop, which um, to me just kind of reeks of. Um, this is this is going to date me a little bit. Um, I'm sure Peter remembers this. I don't know if you remember this, Terrence. The um, what was it? The thing or it or what were they calling it when it was uh, going to going to revolutionize transportation? Oh, uh, yeah, Ginger. Yeah, the Segway. It, and they were calling it like the thing or something. They called for a it, while. it. It the individual yeah. transport. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. This is going to change. This is going to change the way we build cities. It wasn't. That was it Bezos that said that, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then, uh, well, what's amazing is that we did completely no, transform. I think it was Cayman. Wasn't it Cayman? I think it was Bezos. Was it Bezos? Okay. And, you know, we did completely transform all of our cities in response. Yep. So. I mean, you know, mall security guards, their jobs are totally different. We've got um, we've got tours. School security yeah. guards. Lots all of- security guards. It's been Completely revolutionized. Well, one of my, my favorite things about the Segway um, is that, in New York, at least, I don't know if that's if it's changed, but it was illegal to drive on the sh- road, the street, yeah, because it wasn't a car, yep, and it was illegal to have on the sidewalk because it was a motorized vehicle. I mean, I've never seen a Segway in Manhattan. I, I really, you know, I've I seen have, quite I a number of them. Really? Yeah. Okay, so um, they're breaking the law. I haven't seen them down here so much, but when I used to work in Midtown many many years ago, yeah, I I've saw seen them in Midtown. all the time. Like, like people driving constantly. to work, or what, it was some sort of. I don't know. I mean, I don't know where they were I've going. I would stop cops. and ask them. I wouldn't be like, hey, it wasn't you business guy, guys with a... No, it was that sometimes, yeah. and sometimes it was just like tourists or... I mean, yeah. like, but I wasn't stopping people like, hey, you, on the Segway, where are you going right now? Okay, do you want to hear a true story about me and Segway? All right. This, I'm, t- I'm turning. So you I, can't I, hear an audio. I'm turning I, to Peter. I was... Uh, uh, I got asked to keynote this conference about... Mm-hmm. It was actually uh, about 10 years ago, and um, the person who was supposed to speak was Steve Jobs, and he canceled... This is like a private, industry, like at a company retreat thing. It's like Teddy Bear Picnic. It was uh, Time Warner um, doing their annual retreat. And so he was supposed to come and talk about like, and this is when you could get him to do that. Sure. They're like, know? we can't get jobs, so who's number two? And so they're like, we need someone who can come in like, five, you know, like in like 20 minutes. <laughs> like you know? who lives? Who yeah, lives like who lives nearby? <laughs> and I was like, I'll do it. And um, they're like, great. We need you to ride in on a Segway. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you mean what? And they're like, yeah, we're going to, like, we have them here. Like, yeah. We got, we're going to ride in a Segway because people, that'll underscore like how like geeky and like from the future you are. <laughs> Sorry. Can you talk that down? 
sorry. <laughs> I was like, I'll do that. Uh, and then I made sure that I got They had paid. rocket. They had jetpacks at that I, point. I, I know. Um, it's either that or I had to jump through a giant, like, you know, like one of those things where you jump through your own face. You know, like Option the, two. Yeah. Option two. That's uh, what I'm going but, with option yeah, two. I, I would have ridden a segue through my own face. <laughs> so, uh, so I did it. And then um, uh, as I was showing, I can't believe I'm... This is such a tangent, but no, no, um, I love it. I can't believe there's nothing to talk about this this week, Peter. uh, uh, So as I was like showing all these, um, time Warner, like, uh, executives, how to, um, pirate TV shows and like stream them over, you know, to your like, you know, TV and stuff like that. Something they didn't think people could, they didn't, they weren't really familiar with. Um, all these HBO people started booing me because I had, uh, was, I had torrented an episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And then I was streaming it over the Wi-Fi network to, believe it or not, remember Gateway made a DVD player with Wi-Fi in it and that could oh. play DivX files? Was it, was it, did this, it have, a, this did is it have how, a cow pattern this on This is how it? different what? things were Gateway. 10 years ago. That's like... I didn't know Gateway made DVD Gateway player. made a DVD player. I don't remember making with, a DVD player. I remember they used to Google make um, all-in-one TV uh, yeah. computer home entertainment. Like yep. before LCDs, it was like a you know, rear screen projection. So I remember Gateway that. made I remember a, DVD a DVD player, DVD player with Wi-Fi. I know. This is like the craziest thing, right? The crazy thing, too, is that you were talking to Time Warner and they didn't know that any of this stuff existed. Oh, they hated me. So yeah. I, got, I almost got booed off stage. Did, that, they literally yeah. started booing and hissing. So. I found one reference to it from Digital Dad. Digital dad. Oh yeah, a great I, deal. I think I just. I think I must have mentioned the digital dad. So, so this is a really <laughs> long way of explaining Elon Musk's new project. The difference. I mean, okay, let's let's start with the differences. I mean, it's an obvious for me. It's an obvious comparison, but but to to me, the major difference is that the segue, the thing the segue was solving, was having to walk short distances, which is not. I mean, it's not that an issue. Sh- it shouldn't be an issue. You should walk. Places. Well, I mean, it, it's kind of an issue, but only because America How long have is so you been damn in America? fat. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> I, Welcome to our country. But, I see at least five rascals. Now a day. that you say it, it is crazy. It is crazy that did, that 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 it didn't take off. That that was. I think the there just wasn't enough room on the Segway for Americans. Is the problem. <laughs> okay, we no, had to go the rascal route. Yeah, here's a good here's a good tangent too. Is um <laughs> this well, is the tangents episode last time. Not last time. I guess last time I was in Vegas was CES, but the time before that, I think, when we were showing, sh- we were shooting that Ian Gadget show segment where we were riding the planes around. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something I'd never seen before, but apparently is a big thing now in Vegas, is um, bachelorette parties. Large groups of women all renting rascals, driving them down the strip and drinking out of those really, those like trombone <laughs> booze containers. Is <sighs> recreational legal? I, 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 Vegas. Can you, I mean... <laughs> drinking and You wrestling. can drink in public in Vegas. Yeah, you can drink in public, but, but, but while, does a rascal qualify as a motorized, motorized vehicle? That's the... How that's, fast can it go? I'm going to say ten, pro, 10 tops, probably 5 I, to I 10. Don't, I don't think you're killing anybody, so... Yeah, you're bumping into a lot of people on the strip, though. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, if you hit a really old woman heading to a slot machine, you might kill her with a rascal. I'm just going to throw that out there. I mean... What did she have to live for? Let's, let's <laughs> be honest. She could have hit the jackpot she on the next slot. Uh, you know, and you know, she, you can't take it with you, Terrence. You can't <laughs> take that money with you, old lady. Uh, so Elon Musk. I mean, this is the, the reason why it reminds me of of the lead up to the segue. In that is that it was just like here's this super secret thing that I'm going to announce. It's totally going to revolutionize the way we get around. Um, also. The one, the, the uh, beyond the whole like how much money is this this going to cost and and how feasible is it is that the the example that they use is traveling the distance from San Francisco to L A yeah. of taking you thirty minutes yeah which is roughly half the time it takes in a plane yeah except that you ha- can't uh, well yeah it takes about an hour in a plane yeah. Uh, I mean, you have to go through security and all those other things. I suspect there's probably going to be pretty heavy security on the Hyperloop as well. I should hope so. <laughs> Uh, but you know the other thing about it is that if you look at the maps that he showed, you it, you're not going from downtown San Francisco to yeah wherever you, you know yeah downtown. Not I would say downtown LA, but you know to wherever you, you want to go to LA. To go to downtown LA, uh, but um, but because because yeah. the hyperloop needs the the tubing, like it was like you were going to leave from like Hayward or something like that. Yeah, which know. that's fine, but yeah. it's like if you want to get from like San, to get from like downtown SF to Hayward is oh, like you're right. it's takes, another it's an hour. 20, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's a fair that's a fair that's point. That's an too. hour on the BART. So it's not like 
And then if you, you know, end up in, you know, I mean, hopefully they're not dropping you in Bakersfield, but, um, you know, you're certainly going to have to be somewhere you know, on the outskirts of the city. Head. So it's like, it, yeah. you're not necessarily saving that much time. I mean, I think for a cross country journey, like it would certainly, it maybe makes more sense, but, um, yeah, but that's not, I mean, obviously it's not going to roll out like that immediately. You know, well, what, what, that's what, going to be extremely expensive to build. Yeah. It's all going to be largely above ground. I think they're not talking about building. Yeah. It's all going to be above ground tunnels. I also, and I, and I will say that I did not examine like the, you know, the you whole didn't check out the PDF. Yeah. I didn't check out the PDF. Um, but it seems to me like the kind of thing where, because that, you know, you could design it and build it, but there might be some like thing about it that you don't anticipate that makes it really. Unfeasible, yeah. You know? Yeah. If a rock, you know, if like a, if a bird drops a baguette into the hyperloop, <laughs> <laughs> does it open up the space time continuum? No, it's a, it's a fair point. I mean, you know, he, he, he came out and, and uh, well, should we explain what the hyperloop is? Everybody knows what, Everybody it is, knows right? what the hyperloop yeah, is. Yeah. I think we can just get, it's a pneumatic tube. It's right. I mean, it's Imagine not, it's you were not a vacuum bank deposit yeah. and you were put in a little thing oh, and man. then shot. <laughs> Have we have we discussed why why pneumatic tubes completely disappeared? I mean, I, I think they're still kind of big in parts of Europe. It's such uh, a cool technology. Isn't the entire isn't there one connecting like the entire city of Prague or something yeah, I, like that? That yeah. sounds about right. It's such a, it's such a cool thing that really felt super futuristic, and everybody just and abandoned it. Nobody. It banks banks use it all the time. It was used in um, office buildings to get mail across. It's it's in Futurama, and that's about the only place that pneumatic tubes exist yep. right now. So this isn't quite the same. It's not a vacuum tube, but it's a it's a low pressure tube to yeah. to cut down on resistance. Except instead of checks, you put people in it. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's great. It's, it sounds Listen, super fun, buddy. Well, the question know? is, I mean, he's not he he's not going to build it himself. Yeah. He says maybe he'll do a prototype, but do we really think that anybody is going to take this on? Six billion dollars. I mean, you it's know, actually not even that. I mean, the grand scheme of things is not that much money. No, um, from but, a, a public policy standpoint. But when we're talking about actually getting in the black, how long is that going to take? You know, I, so we're well, you know, I mean, you can have a few of them. It's not one at a time, which is and we, nice. And we don't really know what like the upkeep costs are going to be or anything like, yeah. like six billion to build it initially is fine, but how much wear and tear does traveling at you know eight hundred miles an hour put on this? Even sure. if it's in a low pressure tube. To me, to me, you know, if I mean the, you know, I, I guess you've got a little bit of a view from from San Francisco, Los Angeles. I don't know how fast that's going to be shooting by. If you're ever actually going to be able to take in the scenery, I, I suspect you won't. Um, so ultimately, it comes down to how much money is it going to cost. You know, is it is it going to be that much cheaper than a fifty dollars Southwest flight from San well, Francisco? Yeah, to LA? I mean, I think he, pose, he he was posing as an alternative to building a high speed rail network in California, which is going to be yeah. like over 60 billion dollars i think it was like 65 or 69 billion dollars or something like that was the cost and it's not gonna be ready for 40 years it's just it 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 doesn't it doesn't feel necessary to me at all well i mean it's cool i would totally take a pneumatic tube you know after the first year or so when they yeah. got all the murder case I, I would not be the first person sure. in a tube traveling 800 miles an hour sure i mean if like yeah god i, I mean trains it you know it, it's hard to keep trains on the tracks sometimes <laughs> this really this really concerns me yeah um yeah i'll give it a year and if it costs uh 25 bucks to get from uh, san francisco to la i'm in let's do this and Musk. as long as 90 percent of the people who ride it survive i'm gonna say high 90s high 90s i'm gonna say 97 and above okay. that's my cutoff fair enough if three, I th- I, if I three think in you every lack hundred a, die, I mean, we're talking like natural causes. Yeah, I think you lack a sense of adventure. <laughs> um, you're clearly not an early adopter type. I'm not quite sure what you're doing here at Engadget. Um, One in ten worries me. <laughs> it worries it's, me. It's cutting edge, Brian. Sometimes think you got to risk that. a little something. Think about that. That means, you know, ten people are dying in the food cart car every time there's not gonna be a food car in this thing it's a, no, it's a it's 20 not. minute ride i take it back i clearly have not thought this out let's move on to the next story you know let's actually move let's move right on to uh, another science story so here's what i'm gonna do terrence i'm gonna uh, mix things up a little bit i'm going onto my phone right now i am going to i am narrating my actions open uh this is uh, it's audio you've got to you've yeah. got to keep things flowing i don't know what's going on here i'm going to my stopwatch Okay. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to explain how particle accelerators work. Oh, I have no desire to do this. Starting now. Particle accelerators work by telling you to go to Engadget.com and read the Prime, because I have no desire to actually do this. 
This is not a thing to talk about on the podcast. Come on. You've got you've Dude, got the other Terrence O'Brien wrote that article. Yeah, clearly, <laughs> yes. clearly, matter and antimatter uh, collided. I mean, yeah. There's okay, a I'm really... starting you. I'm starting you over again. Just I give wait. me a top level of particle acceleration. Go, <laughs> go. Really? We're at five seconds, Terrence. God, I hate you so much. Um, so we're really gonna do this. This we're, is the thing. Hey. The uh, we're gonna do colliders instead of accelerators. Accelerators particularly uh, accelerate particles with an electromagnetic field. Colliders are two accelerators sitting on top of each other to intersect at various points along the ring where the particles then collide. Good enough? At four seconds. Well done. I feel smarter. All right. Thank you, Terrence. That was great. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to Thank the... you. <laughs> so, yeah. So that was the cover of Distro. And yeah. It's up on the side it's right a, now. I, I'm super proud of it. People yeah. should read it, but I, you, did, I, you got the, yeah, I mean, you got the, the bad end of that deal. Yeah, I really did. I got in over my head on that one. Um, well, I mean, from the respect that you didn't actually get to go see the particle. Oh yeah, there, no, well, like that's people. actually, we should touch on that real quick. That's something I will discuss, <laughs> um, in reference to this. So, um, we have the series of articles primed, which is all about explaining the deeper, uh, we've got 20 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> screw you. <laughs> Uh, Ding. The, tech, the science behind all this stuff. And we really for, should have a buzzer. We oh, really man, should. We used That'd to. The guy, I, I got yelled at. We tried having a bell <laughs> at one point, and that is... That's um, that's, that's That's long gone. So yeah, I made the stupid mistake of pitching particle accelerators, that I would explain how these things worked, which was really, really dumb of me, because they are insanely complex machines, and I was not prepared for okay. the amount of research I had to do and how difficult this was to make it even remotely compre- like comprehensible and i'd say a and what mo- was the first comment you got on twitter um you probably can't repeat i it actually on the show. can't repeat it uh essentially it said i'm stupid so but <laughs> yeah well there was a, there was an expletive or two thrown in there mm-hmm. um but this a isn't month, a mobile podcast no, you can't a month, run your mouth a month after i was assigned the story and i was deep into researching it our good friend Joseph Volpe mm-hmm. got a chance to go to Switzerland and visit visit the Large Hadron Collider. Why he was sent when I was writing this post, and it would be super useful for me to go see it in person. I, I mean, have no idea. So I half of my research for this was actually me emailing questions to Joseph to ask scientists at CERN for me, and him sending me um, transcripts of the interviews he conducted. To pull information it's, it's, out it's, of particle acceleration is nothing if not efficient. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was a fun time. I was like, well, this is clearly the worst way to do this ever. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's move on to uh, let's move on to to BlackBerry. I, is it worth saying that BlackBerry had a bad week? Does well, BlackBerry uh, have good weeks? I think anytime you have to halt trading of your stock, yeah, it's a bad bad week or bad day. So what was what was the mo that behind behind that decision well, behind the announcement? Well, I think that they, um, I, I mean, I think that they wanted the markets to have a chance to, to process and digest the news before. I mean, they, they wanted to risk, they, did, they didn't want their stock to tank. Yeah. Mr. You know, which was a great risk. Because people, I mean, there was a chance that you would just panic on that news. If you, you back up a little bit and, and I mean, explain exactly what that means to halt trading. Um, to halt trading? Yeah. You know, why, why, why a company would decide to do that and what the implications are. Well, I mean, there are very, I mean, and I'm not a financial markets expert, um, but there are various reasons why you might halt trading a stock. I mean, um, you know, if, if, uh, you know, like if the company has, um, you know, some sudden bad news, which they mm-hmm. have to announce in the market, you know, again, they don't want to cause a, a, a panic yeah. in the stock or panic in the market. Uh, sometimes there are issues with, um, uh, you know, incorrect information gets in a filing and then they have to update it and they stop, you know, stop trading a stock. And it doesn't happen very often as far as I, as far as I know, I'm sure there's somebody listening, uh, maybe not right now, but in the future who will be able to uh, correct me and tell me I'm an idiot or something. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I think that it was more that they wanted to um, try to manage what, you know, is pretty bad news, which yeah. is that like you're conceding that, um, your current direction of your business is not working and that you are going to have to find either a buyer or some sort of, I love it like a strategic partner uh, as if somebody might come in and, and um, you know, like Samsung is going to come and like pay them million, like hundreds of millions of dollars to license their OS, which is not going to happen. But um, you know, I think that it is going to, I think the reality is that um, 
they need to they need to find a buyer or to split up the company and um they've had trouble which is why they've actually i think had to get to the stage where they're being uh, more public about it because I, I apparently in the, they tried to sell the company last yeah. year and were not able to find a buyer i mean they you know they've been having trouble for the better part of a decade now but the difference here is i think they in a sense made a hell mary <laughs> you know i mean they could have yeah. they could have just continued to kind of plot along and struggle but when you invest all of your resources into one thing and clearly it's not taking off i mean um we've talked about this before but just just the amount of advertising i mean it's everywhere i mean they're they're getting it out there they haven't had a problem doing that the problem is actually getting people to switch off of their current operating system yeah are there any so so you, so you mentioned samsung which obviously isn't gonna make a ton of sense because samsung is doing just fine with android mm-hmm. um are there any companies out there like a i don't know like a cisco or some sort of like like an it company i mean does anybody does anybody make sense to become a potential buyer for blackberry at this point mm, i can't think of anybody so honestly. I North think, Korea. <laughs> you know, I think that there are some companies that might find value in either the OS or, or the brand or both. Sure. Um, I think that most of those companies, like say like a ZTE or a Huawei or Lenovo, are not necessarily going to want to pay as much as they would have to pay to buy BlackBerry right now. I also don't think that um, given, you know, the security infrastructure that, uh, you know, still often that, that, that BlackBerry still... Uh, uh, powers yeah. um, that you know you could easily see like a uh, uh, you know the Canadian government the U.S. government not allowing a Chinese company to buy um, mm-hmm. BlackBerry or at least if they did then no one would you know no one no U.S. government agency would would use any BlackBerry product after that uh, I think it's conceivable that um, you know they could try to take the path that IBM has IBM got out of the hardware business mm-hmm. they sold their hardware business to Lenovo. And focused on being a services company. And, um, you know, BlackBerry does have some pretty good infrastructure and software. And you could imagine, I think there was someone who did try to buy the company last year, had this idea of, um, you know, focusing on BlackBerry's infrastructure as a way for, you know, enterprise customers to be able to do secure email and secure messaging and stuff like that for um, their customers you know, employees, but to do it on iOS, do it on Android, yeah. whatever. Um, so I think that's, you know, that's something that might be a profitable business for them. The services side of their business actually makes more money, uh, has a better pro- has better margins than the hardware business. Yeah. They, they just got, um, uh, was it, uh, the department of defense, I, I think just, um, okayed BlackBerry 10 devices to be yeah, used there. So clearly recently. that was like a week or two ago. So, so, I mean, clearly they've got, they've got locked that lockdown, um, they've got security lockdown, which is going to continue to be important for you know any any large business. So important to note, both iOS and Android have already passed that mm. certification. So for for the DoD, I believe so. I I can, I, du- I can double check. You that, should but double I'm, check that because I, I I believe there was something in the press release that that uh, whatever the agreement uh, it was, it was the first of its kind um, based on uh, iOS six was approved for use on military networks. Yeah, this is specifically for the Department of Defense. I mean, it's it's probably like splitting hairs. At Samsung Knox gets official Department of Defense approval, so yeah. Okay. Point being that, you know... They, they're, they're not all Android, by the way. Okay. Samsung Knox mm-hmm. meets their requirements. Okay. Yeah. Okay, no no touch whiz. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's certainly, I certainly can probably get the company. There are pieces there. Um, I mean, the, the patents are worth something, maybe not as much as they were a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, so the hardware Mirabolt business might, might <laughs> yeah. buy a BlackBerry. <laughs> but, you know, it's like you could see splitting the company up into three parts. Maybe somebody buys the patents, somebody buys the legacy yeah. hardware business. Uh, and then somebody buys and then either left with the services business or somebody buys the services business. So that's not inconceivable. Blackberry messenger, <laughs> you know, they missed the, they missed the, yeah. they missed the boat there. Yeah, the windows, I mean, I think that's the thing closed. is that, that they waited too long they missed the boat on everything. They missed yeah. the boat. But I also think that like they, they really misunderstood the market and, and the market is, I mean, change. And if you look yeah. at a company, which I, I think one of the things that, that we've learned is that if you are going to, you know, have a, have a, a that, you know, we're, we're in a business, it's a business of ecosystems now. And if, yeah. and you have to build, uh, to be at the center of the ecosystem, you have to create a world-class mobile OS. And that is extremely resource intensive. And even, which com- they've created a, a very good mobile OS. 
Uh, yes, but I'd, I'd say it's not, but it's not, it's clearly not competitive. Well, a lot of that is just, you know, developer. There's just not enough af- maps for it at this point. Right? Well, but I would say there's think, bigger problems than that. But, but they're bigger. Yeah. So there yeah. are other issues. There are issues with BlackBerry 10. And I think that they're, that staying at feature parity with Android and iOS is extremely difficult. I mean, think about the resources that Google and mm-hmm. Apple are throwing at this. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's very difficult for, for BlackBerry to compete. I mean, you can look at like the challenges that Microsoft is having, keeping Windows Phone competitive with Android and iOS. And they have a, a probably, you know, several orders of magnitude more resources that they're able to throw at the problem. So, yeah, things are good for BlackBerry. <laughs> uh, just brought down the party a little bit. I, it's, yeah, I mean, you know, not a lot of news, but none no, of the news is pretty particularly why don't we jump straight to something a little more lighthearted and fun no i know you're talking about you're talking about people being shot yeah yeah <laughs> let's start with htc and then let's move to okay LG. and then we'll let's move to that. people being have shot. you guys watched have you guys watched the full i have not Robert uh, i watched a couple i didn't watch the full one i watched okay. some of the shorter ones it, it's a longer version of the short one so yeah. the, the idea here is that they're bringing in a, a, a guy to reinvent what htc means which is, which is actually you know it, it's it's um, an interesting idea in that I think we've seen like LG, for example, as somebody who can, who basically went and reinvented what the, uh, initials yeah. of the company stand for, you know, so that's the basis of this. <laughs> uh, the, but I think the real, I mean, the real news here is the fact that they're spending a billion dollars on this campaign, yeah. Yeah. which is more than they spent in all of last year on advertising. Well, so I mean, the thing is that HTC makes really great hardware that, tech journalists love Mm -hmm. and then consumers don't buy and so this because there's no robert downey jr attached to it i think in general their marketing (laughs) is pretty poor their marketing has been really poor they just don't have the resources i don't even know that it's that they don't have the resources necessarily i think it's a mix of go i think the thing is if there's one thing that you know i believe is that you know you can be really clever and do great marketing on very little money yeah and, and that we've seen that over and over again now I'm not saying that, um, that you know that at the scale that HCC needs to get to, that you don't have to spend some money, and that you don't have to, and that and that having less money than Samsung, for example, has not hurt them. But I think that if you are creative and um, uh, come up with some innovative ways to do things, you can level the playing field a little bit. Yeah, and they're not doing that. The, the market. The <laughs> There's market, only so much you can do. I'm not, I'm, I, but I'm saying, but they're not even doing that. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Is that it's not that you know that I mean, obviously you have to be clever and come up with creative ways to do things. But people have, I mean, you do see time and time again that people are able to be um, resourceful in the way that they do things and able to, I mean, promote. Um, you know, th- like we see all the time, stuff uh, gets promoted and successfully marketing on 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 a fraction of the of the budget. And if it was honestly, and if just spending money on marketing was all that it took, then you would see. You know, we wouldn't have like like hit movies. We wouldn't see like blockbuster f- movies that flop. We wouldn't see you know, like there are products that, that have huge marketing budgets. Yeah, I'm, which I'm fail. not saying it's 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 going to be a make or break, but I you know it's it's at a point now where it's it's just it's going to be so hard for them to really make a huge dent in in that market, and at least in the United States. I don't I don't think it's. I mean, it's going to be tough for them regardless. I don't think they're at like this like. Uh, well, they're not black. Point of, yeah, they're, it's, they're not at like a point of no <laughs> yeah. return. Um, but I mean, yeah, I think they, they haven't been creative or efficient in the way they've spent their marketing money. I think they've been very bad at communicating their value to American consumers. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't even remember the last HTC commercial I saw, like, yeah, HTC is also also probably in a similar boat as as LG at this point, where people kind of just associate them with the phones that they used to make, and I think that's the main thing that they need to do is just shake that, yeah, <laughs> that, you know, and and let people know that they they are in fact making premium phones, and that's, I mean, you know, the ultimately the big issue with with this ad campaign right now is that it's not an ad campaign about the phone at all, right? It's, no, a, yeah. it's, it's literally, it's a, me, it's such a meta ad campaign in that it's an ad campaign about how the company needs to change its image. So Look, a, you're coming out and saying that we need to change our image yeah. and B you're not showing a device at all. Well, look, I mean, if, if this is just the beginning of, if this is a little bit of like, let's reset the brand yeah. and then build, 
that's fine. If this is the campaign, they're in trouble. I mean, you know, <laughs> right? they've made it very clear that 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 you know Robert Downey Jr. is going to be the face of this campaign. Sure, and and I, I'm always skeptical of the celebrity route. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, but like they really have to have something that builds like from here and to look at like what they've just done as a way to sort of yeah to like reset the brand in people's minds and to like say we're starting from starting fresh. Yeah. Um, starting fresh is not necessarily where you want to be. But I think the 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 thing with HTC is, um, you know, I, I don't think that they understand the mar- the American market that well, especially how to market uh, here in the U.S. And I think also that they grew on the back of their carrier partnerships. Mm-hmm. They solved problems for carriers. I mean, they were a company that didn't even have a, a consumer facing brand yeah. until just a few years ago, and their way of doing business was, you know, to go to a, a carrier and to like help them fill a gap in their product portfolio. And what's happened is since then, and the carriers, you know, worked with them to mark, do, did, did a lot of the marketing and promotion. Mm-hmm. But since then we've seen all these other strong players come into the market, like Samsung, for example, that have, um, uh, you know, that do have their own big marketing budgets that and are they creating, have, they have brand recognition, right? Brand the recognition, everybody knows what a galaxy device yeah, is. And also, and, and you know, frankly are making, you know, like, also very good devices. I mean, personally, I prefer the HTC One, but I don't think anybody could say that the S4 is a bad phone. I mean, you may, no. there may be things you don't like about it, but it's, yeah. it's, it's not like, it's, it's like a world-class device. Sure. Just like the One is a world-class device, the S4 is a world-class device, you know, the iPhone is a world-class device. And I think that, um, you know, Samsung is doing, this, is doing things that HTC doesn't have the resources to do, like, making sure that all of the reps in stores have incentives to sell, well, ga- you know, galaxy phones rather than somebody else. Uh, that see that, that that's a really good point. That was, that was something that, that I wanted to get around to. Um, they're doing it. They're doing a good job of it. But you know, when we're talking about a billion dollars of budget that they're spending to make, to make commercials, I mean, commercials, commercials will only get you so far, but it, it would be really interesting to see one of these companies. It, it, it could be LG. It could be HTC. It could be, Huawei or, or ZTE yeah. come in and take all of that marketing money and sp- I don't want to, I hate using like guerrilla campaigns, but, but spend it to really get it into consumers' hands to really like let people touch and feel. Yeah. And that's how you tell, well, I mean, they, they that's how expand. you know, an, I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's how you know, uh, an H, that's how you know an HTC one from, from a galaxy. I mean, that, that really, that, that's, the big difference is the way it looks and feels. I mean, the awareness uh, of the one is just so low. I mean, I, yeah. I, 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 and I think that's the thing, like they're not, it, whatever they've been doing has not been breaking through it. Ha- they have yep. not driven awareness. It's not something that, you know, they did a really good job of, of creating buzz in, you know, sort of our world. Right. Um, but they didn't figure out how to get past that. And yeah. that's sort of the, 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 the difference between PR and marketing. Well, I think they expected us to do their job for them, essentially. It was like, <laughs> if, if we yeah. get all the journalists on board and we make this thing that they really like, they'll sell the phone for us. Well, which, which, which is a plan that might work if you're actually introducing something that is legitimately a new product. Yeah, yeah well, it's got to be a new market segment yeah. completely. Well, yeah, you can't uh, just be like, they're going to sell Or they had phone. to have just reinvented the smartphone. If they did that, then yeah, yeah maybe, maybe word of mouth could have had a l- much larger effect. But when you're talking about two devices that in a lot of cases have very similarly specced components, that's not going to make a difference. Well, really. I think it's like fewer people are buying their first smartphone now. Yeah. I mean, it's the market's hitting sat- you know, saturation in the US and people are feeling less compelled to upgrade. And I think... Um, you know, and I think that it, it's, 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 you have to find ways to motivate people. You don't have to do things to kind of get them out of bed now yeah. in a way that you might not have had to two or three years ago. But what they do have for them, though, that BlackBerry doesn't have going for them is that people don't have to switch over their ecosystem. People don't have to switch the ecosystem. And that's one of the, the, the things that, um, you know, for any Android maker, right, they have this issue. It's like they don't have the lock in. Yeah. And I think um, they think skinning is going to do it. Well, I'd be really, yeah. I mean, I'd be really interested to see, um, what the the what the loyalty rates are within Android because we talk about Android versus iOS loyalty rates retention rates but I'd be curious to see from uh, device to device from device to mm-hmm. device because yeah. like you know I don't see whether it's Samsung or HTC or or even the Nexus devices you don't necessarily see a lot of people saying like I'm only going to stick with 
yeah this series um it, it, it'll be interesting to see actually i don't know if this is going to have a huge effect because it's really just focused towards early adopters but um as all the carriers starting with t-mobile and everybody else following have moved to this early upgrade plan i wonder if i wonder if that's going to impact people's buying habits and people's you know ability to kind of jump from device to device like, is that actually going to impact the market? I don't know. I feel like it's a little bit like the 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 the, the people that are going to take advantage of that are the ones who already know about already, the one already do that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. I, I I don't know. I mean I I, I just I mean I, on some level I'm glad that HCC is at least doing something rather than just sort of rolling over. But um it it yeah. the this the mobile market is so unforgiving and moves so quickly uh, that I think that you can be left behind you know, in, in, you know, 18 months. Are they, are they totally out of the OEM market? I mean, we, we tend not to really kind of cover the, the, the ODM market. Yeah. I don't think they ODM for anybody anymore. Really? It's yeah. just, it's just their own devices at this point. I think so. Yeah. Well, probably because again, like, you know, the ZTEs of the world have well, swept didn't they, in. Didn't they yeah, split it? The, didn't them. they split the business into two companies, the ODM and the OEM business? Mm, I don't know that answer that question. That. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to look that up. Okay, Let's, we'll move on to yeah. uh, to another company that's attempting to... <laughs> to God, should we laugh? I mean, nobody died. No, we can, we laugh, can laugh at this. We absolutely can laugh uh, at this. LG obviously is, has been having some trouble marketing themselves as well. Um, I, I, I suspect they've been having less of an issue in Korea, but they are doing some strange stunts over there. Yeah. I think that's, that's do you want to... Do we have a video for this, Joe? <laughs> Can we toss up? Can we toss up? We, you got to toss up some video. This is also just a weird um, Korean newscast for a lot of reasons. Number one, as they're describing this story that involves balloons and BB guns and and knives and free LG phones, they were showing <laughs> lots of clips from World War Z. I did. Have you not watched? No, this clip? I have not watched this okay, clip. Okay, so hopefully we can throw that up. Um, I'm gonna watch it now without <laughs> sound. But yeah, for I don't even know what the idea behind this promotion was the g in the cloud like that was the whole concept here which i don't quite get i'm not it was the promotion was hey let's just you know get people really excited and and about these uh, about these phones yeah i mean but i I don't quite get the um the metaphor yeah the metaphor that they were going for um it's not like lg has this massive like cloud infrastructure where they have all like provide a whole bunch of services but either way so they put um, vouchers for free handsets in helium balloons and then handed out BB guns to a bunch of people to shoot them out of the sky with. Did they hand out the BB guns? Are you I sure don't about think they that? Handed out I, think they I think people brought their own guns to guns and knives okay, to the party. Which some members of the crowd tried to shoot down with using BB guns. Yeah. So, so, so I, you know, I will back up and <laughs> I, say I, that a lot of blame has been placed on LG. Um, I don't know. If I was throwing an event like this, I would just assume that people weren't going to bring guns, but maybe I'm naive. Well, I mean, well, well what I think it's funny is that more than one person thought to bring a gun. Idea. <laughs> like, well, I mean, what would is you that think how people think in Korea? Like, well, that's, a, yeah, I mean, we should... It, it would never occur to difference. me. Well, well, I don't think it's America, necessarily a cultural difference. I mean, um, if, the, if the entire... There wouldn't promotion. have been BB guns here. Well, that's also true. They'd have brought actual guns, which <laughs> would have been a much bigger problem. But, I mean, yeah. <laughs> LG tells you that we're going to release a bunch of vouchers for free phones into the yeah. air on helium balloons. Go get them. Yeah. You've got to have a way to get the balloon out of the air. You're not going to follow it for three days while you wait for the helium to slowly Here's what know, happened. pass through the balloon. You're going to go get a BB gun and you're going to shoot at it somebody and LG, hurt someone. Somebody LG one night sat down and watched It's a Mad, 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 Mad World <laughs> and based this this entire event on that. Do you remember, do you, do you remember that movie where it yes. was like... A bunch of old comedians driving around trying to find treasure. Yeah, that's a great movie. Yeah, this is basically this is basically because yeah, because yeah, you you so you set this is this is this is a bigger question. So you you let a balloon go, and if you're not finding a way to get it out of the air, you just have to wait for it to come down. Yeah. So okay, people I would, should be seeing this video butterfly. By the way. Are there no bows and arrows? Like that's the thing I'm trying to figure. Well, that's uh, I mean that that's that might potentially be even, even more. I think that, I'm just saying that. Yeah. Would, like Ted Nugent, you know, like, that would have been pretty bad. I, I think Nugent everybody, a phone. Oh. everybody should be super thankful that nobody brought a 12 gauge. I mean, really, that's I, I don't <laughs> even think you can carry around a gun like that in Korea, South Korea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we can I, find out. Yeah, I, any any Koreans in the I, I have a feeling that they're uh, yeah, uh, their John, gun laws John are probably, says in the chat that LG is going to put the prize in the big W. Yeah, good job, good job, John. 
Thanks for getting the reference. John John was uh, uh, 35 when that movie came out. <laughs> little, little known fact. He's so, actually 35 now. Still, <laughs> John is ageless. Uh, that's that's uh, semi professional skateboarder John Turi. Yes. One. All right. So All right. <clears throat> bad. Don't, so don't do that. HTC. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't encourage people to bring weapons to yeah. a strange promotional event. Yeah. So HTC. You know when it when it comes right down to it, you could be doing a lot worse. Um, we've got a couple more things that we could potentially talk about on but the show. We don't really want no, to well, because none of them are particularly say. interesting. Nothing is huge. Uh, so I'm going to open things up to uh, to to questions in the chat right now. I'll give you some time because I know there's a bit of a delay there. Um, oh, and then you're gonna. Out. You can do that. I don't Wait, is no one going to guess what color Motorola X I want? Motorola oh, yeah, we can talk. Yeah, yeah. let's talk about that. We'll, okay, I'll play so, the Spiro, Spiro. You'll talk about that. People will be at chat. What are you going to do? And, uh, any guesses in chat? Um, <laughs> Terrence, you got to do a thing, too. What I got to do, do a this? thing? A stunt. You shotgun the, oh, you're done with your design. Yeah, I'm done with my... Somebody can go downstairs, get me a beer, bring it up, and what then if I'll you shotgun put, that. What if you put a fake beard on your real beard? Oh, that would be... Fun. Okay, go, go, Peter. All right. Well, <laughs> put the sunglasses on. So, too, so because... we've been talking a lot about the Moto X customization, which I think is is a really good idea. I'm surprised nobody came up with it earlier. Yeah, no, it's, it's a good idea, and I, I went through the 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 process to design uh, and customize a phone. Oh no, um, <laughs> it's like we got ZZ Top over here. <laughs> uh, and uh, I'm just gonna sit here like this for the rest of the podcast, <laughs> just so you know. I actually spent more time trying to, to like trying to, to decide what i wanted than i i thought i would and it's spending maybe like 25 minutes which is great today. engagement for them right yeah if i mean if they've been, if they've been serving up ads it would have been a really lucrative yeah. uh business but um uh, what I, I mean there's a lot of different you can choose uh between black and white uh kind of faceplate and then a bunch of different colors for the back and then i decided i really wanted a soft touch back rather than a a, uh, a glossy back and so there were only a handful of options there and then trying to find a, well, there you go. This Firo. Can you make it go faster than a Lamborghini, or only I can, almost but as fast? Not on this table. Um, blue and neon pink. Uh, no, I did not go with blue and neon pink. I don't even know if neon pink is one of the accent colors. Uh, so you're but, not going to hold out for the wood, though, is what you're saying? No, you don't want like I a think nice the wood. Is wall. cool. I would get no, the wood. No, it's cool, but it's yeah. not. I, I'm not sure how long. Uh, you just, there it goes. There it goes. All right. You just don't have the patience. Ruin uh, So I ended up. Go, I'll just when tell everybody. When will get wood? Um, it's going to be in uh, this this fall. I'm sorry, that was no, bad. No, it is off color. Um, <laughs> so I think that's at least the third time you've made that joke <laughs> yeah. on this podcast. By the way, uh, this is what color did you get? Peter well, I ended up uh, originally. I thought I was going to go with this. They, they what they called concrete, which was like a gray, and then I realized I wanted the soft touch. So I yeah. kind of went between the. There was like a, a like a royal blue, mm-hmm. um, which I thought would be a little too um, ostentatious for me. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty classy, royal, royal blue. But you know, but it was like a bright, yeah. like a, and if it was navy, that would be. Well, they do have a yeah. navy, which also looked really nice. I ended up going with the olive, kind of like a dark, like a, like That's a nice. not a olive drab exactly, touch but olive. a soft touch, okay. um, kind of a dark olive um, with the uh, white faceplate. I'm surprised more more handset manufacturers don't don't make soft touch standard. And I've got the well, yeah. I got the Mophie on here, so I have a soft touch on my iPhone. But yeah, it's great. I, I, I much prefer it because um, you, you've got the um, you've got the Nook, which has that nice that nice soft touch back. Yeah, it's great. Lovely. It's Everything should be in soft, it's, soft touch. I'm just gonna stroke. Just, <laughs> uh, you're, so we got, you're in soft touch. You're asking for trouble right now. With that. Uh, I'm gonna rub the beard on the mic. Do we have any questions? We, know, we, we don't have any questions. <laughs> that was the Sphero. It goes faster than a Lamborghini. Almost as fast as Lamborghini. Well, somebody, I saw somebody in chat or in, in the comments actually sat down and crunched the numbers and said that technically it's faster than Lamborghini. Yeah. Um, it's, all, it's all about scale. Yeah, I was going to say in scale. <laughs> it doesn't actually go 250 miles an hour. Uh, 129 bucks. And that's all you have to say about that. Well, here's what I have to say about this, the, the Sphero. Uh, speaking of John Turry, this is a conversation that he and I were having earlier, which is... Um, I, it's a it's a super neat toy. There's no question about that. And the first couple times you play with it, it's really awesome. You can control you can control a RC ball with your your phone, but you know it gets a little dull after a while. Yeah. Um, it's really telling that they had to build all of these augmented reality apps that you have to stare at your phone to look at an image of the Sphero. This real this cool real world tactile toy that you've bought, you have to look at a picture of it through your phone. Yeah, but it's neat. Um, yeah, that's how I kind of felt about it. I, I, I thought about buying the original one, and yeah. then I realized like 
after I used it, like just like you said, like after I played with it a couple of times, like what the hell would I do with it? Yeah. Do you have cats? Nope. I have a kid. Yeah. They are. They're actually doing some. Uh, int- I'm going to keep talking while you <laughs> while you stroke my bird, Terrence. Uh, they're I have doing, nothing. They've to got add some to interesting this, really. education initiatives. Um, I just, yeah. I mean, it's a big ask. 129 bucks is a big ask. Yeah. If um, it was like 60 bucks, like it's still pricey, but it's. Yeah, the the original one is still on sale. It went down to one ten, which is not a huge discount um, no. at all. I, I don't know how much the components are. I think it's probably an issue of scale at this point. It is an issue of scale because they're not a very big company. Yeah, um, but you know, if it did, if it did take off, I guess it's a chicken and the egg thing. You know, yeah. the price is going to have to come out, but in order for it to come down, they're really going to have to be able to make it on large scale. I, I wish them the best. I mean, it's, you know, I think that they, obviously they have, they've done well enough to get to, to a, second a second one, one yeah. so. or have enough funding to get to a second yeah. one. Um, it's cool. I, I, but the, I, the apps are really cool and it is neat that it's, um, you know, that they've got the API out there so you can pretty much build anything around it. Um, you know, there's some, some cool zombie games and things like that. Uh, <laughs> cool some ramps. Yes. Some, Which you had some a lot ramps? of trouble uh getting i had I, d- I had some trouble configuring it the first time but i think i'm a pretty you getting you getting better i'm a, much more I'm a accurate. sphero pro all right yeah <laughs> is, is sphero going to be in the next x games is that we're going to set up like half pipes with spheros and i mean if you know again if we if we're moving towards that wa- wally future absolutely it's all going to be rc control vehicles <laughs> in the x games right sure okay you're just trying to get me we're to all, look at- we'll all be too out of shape to actually do anything mm-hmm. so. But we'll have really muscular thumbs. Yes. So looking forward to the future. Uh, John, oh, John thinks that you should get a Moto X with uh, <clears throat> Olinguito fur. Is that the... Um, I think that's the raccoon thing that they found. Yeah, the, that's a cross between a teddy bear and a... And a teddy bear and a house cat. Yeah. And, and how this went undiscovered for so long. I'm, eh, the jungles are pretty thick. Yeah, I guess it's true. Yeah. Uh, I was suggesting that we you talk to the New York Parks Department and upgrade to Olinguitos instead of raccoons. Wouldn't you like to have one of those adorable things going through your trash? Is it bad that I the first thing I think of is I wonder what it tastes like? I I feel like I don't know. I don't eat meat, but I feel like uh raccoons would probably be pretty gamey, is my guess. Gamey's not necessarily a bad yeah. thing. Mm, Maybe like a, a a gyro, like a, a nice Olinguito gyro. Pretty good. Make it Great to a with loaf. tahini, absolutely. Uh, apparently, the podcast froze, which explains a lot when it, when when you really come down to it. So, uh, yeah, work is still here. I'm I'm, I'm watching myself. All right. bearded and everything. Apparently, you have to be in the room for the podcast to work, which uh, again is a very troubling business model. So, I want to thank everybody for uh, for joining us, Peter Rojas uh, at Peter Ross on Twitter. So, Ryan got at Ryan. It took him a while, but he got. Oh, it. really? Yeah. He, he didn't have it originally. He didn't have it originally. He no. didn't get get in that early. He, he uh, pulled some strings at Twitter. Oh. So, and I, I mean, I would love to have at Peter, but somebody, it was actually being, it's still, it was, it was, and it continues to be used by someone. Okay. So it wasn't like yeah. dormant. But the other thing is, uh, you get all these people who don't really know how Twitter works, who just like, if you're, they have a friend named Ryan, we'll do like at Ryan. Mm-hmm. And so his Twitter, his like reply stream. When was just Paul filled. Ryan was the VP candidate, yeah. he used to get a lot of those. <laughs> yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a curse um, yeah. more than a uh, blessing. Yeah. So Peter Rojas, I'm I'm totally good. I'm sure there's a lot of Peter Rojas's in the world, so that's a pretty good get. Oh, actually, I got an email today. Not to get it on a. a no, nope, let's do it. Okay, we're we're, on it. we're in this for the long haul. You're gonna you are gonna uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, I, I definitely did not <laughs> delete it. Terrence. Um, it was. It's hard to search for your own name. I suspect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't do a search for my own name in the. Uh, uh, hold on. Um, it was. I'm a, slowly sliding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> gotta be quick or Terrence is gonna die it was from a uh, writer prisoner oh no there's a, a Peter Rojas serving a life sentence oh. so I know four but not exactly what you expect to show up Stealing in a Google it's Twitter <laughs> he crossed the wrong he yeah. crossed the other Peter Rojas um, started sad so, and, and ended sad on yeah this. no I know so gotcha we gotta we gotta get out of this funk uh the North Korea phone? No, I'm not gonna no. do it. Oh, jetpacks. Jetpacks are cool. Jetpacks have been uh, the 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 Martin jetpack has been appro- approved for manned test flights. I thought we were wrapping up. Oh, <laughs> I'm just trying to do a happy thing. Oh, if you think okay. we're we're going out of happy, happy. I, I think there's a, there's we wanted to go out on smiles. <laughs> yeah. Damn it! You guys don't have to watch a podcast anymore, so <laughs> things are looking up for everybody. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Jetpacks. Awesome. Yeah. Approved. You can finally buy one. If Time Warner uh, asks you <laughs> Flying in a jet pack. to fly in through your own face on a jetpack, would you do it? Uh, you know, I don't think I'm actually welcome back at their events. So, <laughs> uh, All right. Well, thank you, Peter. Thank you, Terrence. Uh, Terrence O'Brien. Oh, Joe's taking a picture. That means it's time to wrap up the show. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks. We'll be back uh, next week, and yep. maybe something will happen in the week of tech. If not, we can just do this. Yeah, we'll just do this, guys. We'll just we'll all have beards. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. everybody. Bye. Maybe I'll be drunker. Mm-hmm. <laughs>